Hey guys, this is Aaron. Today I want to look at something that I hear requests for a lot, and that is drawing a spring in SketchUp. So we're going to do this in SketchUp Pro. Um, I'm going to start by saying, bye Stacy, bye Stacy. And I'm going to start with a circle. I'm going to pull the circle out. I'm going to do this at kind of a, a large scale. So um, we'll pull it out 12 inches. And this circle, look at the entity info, has 24 sides. This is important because the first thing we're going to do is create our helix. And uh, it's going to be dependent on the number of sides here. So I want to start at the green axes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have an angled piece come up to just above the next se segment. So I'm going to actually go to the segment just to the right of the green axes and just draw a vertical line and then one back down to the beginning point. Like I said, I do want to keep it on the green axes and we'll see why as we go through and uh, continue to draw our spring. All right, that looks good. I can delete that vertical piece. Now I'm going to grab the angled piece and use rotate. So while it's highlighted, I'm going to click in the middle. I'm going to click at the end where it is now, and I want to rotate it over to the next side. But I want to make a copy of it. I don't want to just move this. I want to actually hit Alt or Option to copy and move it to the next point. I want one of those all the way around. So right now, before I do anything else, I'm just going to type X23. I want to make 23 copies. The original counts as one. 23 copies is a total of 24. Enter. There we go. All right, now what I want to do, I'm going to animate to the side like this. I'm going to go to select and drag a box right to left. So I want the dotted box, not the solid box, to select all those pieces. Now I can grab move and move from that first point. Again, alter option to copy straight up. I'm going to go right up to the piece above it, which is the actual, the, the next line over. And I'm going to do that same thing before I do anything else. X. 23 enter so by making 24 copies and then copying up 24 times what I've assured is that this piece that starts on the green axes goes around like this and actually ends right here on the green axes as well so one way to verify that is to select it and we want to select all the selected pieces so to select all the connected edges you triple click on line problem is all this is connected together right now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the pieces of the circle that connect this piece that starts on the green axis to the rest. Now, if I double click, you can see that highlighted piece goes around and ends right above that green axis. So I'm good to go. That's awesome. So what I can do now is I'm going to select and make that a group. I'm making a group because what I need to do now is do a group select of everything except I want to deselect that little uh, the one piece that I created that I want to hold on to. If I hold on the shift key while I'm in select, of course, I get the plus minus. So I can just pick on that piece. It'll turn that off and then I can delete the rest of the geometry. Now I'm left with my group of my single revolution of my helix. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup it. I don't really need it in a group. So I can explode that. That looks good, but it's a little bit stretched out for a spring. So I'm going to use scale to bring it down. And uh, I'm going to be a little arbitrary. I'm sorry if you're a machinist and want some exact measurements. You could go through that, but for this example, that looks good for me. Now I'm going to grab all of that, use move with the alter option key to copy straight up. And I'm going to say times nine. I want, I want a spring that's 10, piece, 10 circles, 10. I don't know what the term is for going around one time, 10 revolutions. Anyhow, 10 of the things I made before. There we go, that looks good. So right now, I could come in with a circle. I could come to the bottom, and this is why it was important to get it on the green axes, because, because it's on the green axes, I now know that if I draw a circle at the red axes, and I'm gonna bring this out, say, one inch, I know that that is perpendicular, or about perpendicular to that first line to carry it around. Now, I let follow me do its thing. I'm gonna triple click on this line. It's gonna grab all the pieces, follow me, and then click here. And let's take just a second, and there we go. I got the start of a spring. This is not a perfect spring. We got some issues that we can, we can clean up here. Uh, first thing, it's segmented. See, each of these pieces is a separate piece. 
I can fix that, of course, by coming up, selecting all, by triple clicking again, and then toggle soften coplanar off and back on. All right, there, that's smoothed out. It's also backwards. I'm seeing the back edges on all the faces. So if I triple click again, right click, and I can say reverse faces. All right, so now I have a better looking spring. How do we do this? I'm just gonna triple click and slide this over. You can see that this geometry is not connected to my original path. So uh, I can triple click and then use move to slide it over. How do we go about making that without having to do cleanup afterwards? Well, let's look at just that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that and we're gonna actually add a couple things too. Uh, first thing I wanna do is I wanna actually compress this last coil. So this is gonna be almost parallel and then start to come down, same at the bottom. Uh, I see a lot of springs that look like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the last revolution. Again, I don't know if I'm actually using the right term there or not. And I can start clicking around. I can also use group select. Again, right to left gives me that dashed box. So anything that's crossed by the box gets highlighted. You see, this is still kind of a tedious process. And the problem is even when I'm holding down shift, if I accidentally select over one that was already selected, it turns off. So some people aren't aware of this, but by just holding down the alt or option key, I get the plus select. That means it will only add things. So then I don't have to worry about toggling things on and off with select since I'm only adding. Likewise, if I hold down shift and then alt or option, I get the minus select and that will only deselect. So if I select something accidentally that I didn't want, I can turn to just minus, to turn that one off. And then of course, like I said, just option will give you just plus. A lot of people know that shift is plus or minus, but there are options to use those others in isolation as well. All right, so now that I have that, I'm just going to use scale, not paint bucket, but scale to just kind of squish that up. I'll do that at the top too. So again, I want to look at this one on up. And again, if I use my alter option key, I can just drag across here. I don't have to worry about accidentally selecting other ones. And then I can use scale to squish that down. And again, I could be a little more precise. I could put a reference line in there for how big I want that gap to be. Um, I'm just kind of showing you guys stuff. Now, to put my circle in again. Red axes again, one inch again. And here's the first thing we'll look at. The first thing is, remember how it all came out inside out? I can fix that by simply clicking on the, the disc I'm gonna start with and reversing faces. That's gonna actually keep that white side, the, the proper outside face, all the way around the spring. The other piece, how it all came out segmented, is because each of these lines right now is a separate piece. So if I triple click, I can use something like the weld extension to make that all one piece. This will prevent me from having to soften and smooth afterwards. All right, so having done all that, I've got my welded geometry, my proper face, my compressed end revolutions, I'm making words up as I go, and follow me, pick the surface, and there we go. That is my uh, closer to one step spring. I didn't have to do any cleanup after that and uh, looks, uh, looks better than the first one I made, especially the way the first one started. So that's it, drawing a spring in SketchUp using only native tools. I should point out that there are extensions out there that make this sort of thing really easy. You could just do it in a click, but the point of Skill Builders is of course to give you guys some skills to draw stuff where if you don't have access to extensions or you have something that falls off the beaten path, the extension won't quite cover it, you know what you need to do. So how do we do? Did you like what you saw? Give us a like or maybe subscribe down below. Better yet, leave a comment and let us know what you thought. And if there's something specific you'd like to see us cover, tell us about that too. We like making videos, but we like them best when they're covering the things you wanna see. Thank you.